Hey guys, this video is to help you with the thermochemistry 2 calculations. So in part A, we were determining the calorimeter constant, C cal, for your calorimeter. Um, and so the, the fundamental equation is an energy balance equation, which we see a lot in thermochemistry. Um, the amount of thermal energy that goes into or out of the cold object is equal in magnitude, but opposite in sign to the amount of energy that goes out of or into the hot object. Um, in part A, the cold thing is the, the room temperature water that we added from the beaker into the calorimeter. The hot was the hot or warm water that was in the calorimeter plus the calorimeter itself, which is the, the plastic and the metal and all that good stuff. And so we can write Q as MS delta T. So for us, for the cold, it's the mass of the cold water, specific heat of the cold water, delta T of the cold water. And for the hot, it's MS delta T of the hot water plus the calorimeter constant, which is just the, the heat capacity of the calorimeter, which we want to find in this part, times delta T of the, the hot. Um, so if we rearrange this equation, so we can solve it for the calorimeter constant, C cal. And from our experiment, um, we know everything else in here. We collected enough data to give us all this other information. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just put some numbers in here so you see kind of where everything goes, um, what it looks like in the actual calculation. But again, um, these are not your numbers. These are mine. So use yours. They're, yours are going to look different. Um, don't worry if your, your answers don't look like mine. Um, just use your, your numbers, your data. So for me, um, my cold water had this mass. This is, well, it's water, so it's 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius for its specific heat. That was my initial temperature. This is the final temperature of the system. And so my delta T looked like this. For the cold water, it was positive 14.5 degrees Celsius. Now this is the mass of my hot water, specific heat, initial temperature of the hot, delta T, final minus initial, same final temperature because, you know, same system. And I got a negative delta T for my hot. Plugging all these numbers into our equation, I ended up with a calorimeter constant of about 35 joules per degree Celsius. Again, that's mine. Yours is going to be different. Part B, where we are finding the heat of solution of magnesium nitrate hexahydrate, it's still, we start out with an energy balance equation, Q cold equals minus Q hot. In this, cold, in this um, experiment, this part of the experiment, Q of solution we'll, we'll call our Q cold. And Q hot, well, the other side of the equation, is going to be um, wherever the energy is coming from. That's going to be the water that's in the calorimeter as well as the calorimeter itself. We have to take both into account. And so Q of the water is MS delta T of the water. Q of the calorimeter is the calorimeter constant times delta T of the water because we're assuming that, and it's a very good assumption, because the water was in the calorimeter and they were in thermal equilibrium, the delta T of the water is the same as the delta T of the calorimeter. And so plugging these in, we get our equation for the Q of the solution, the amount of thermal energy that, it, that goes into or out of dissolving our magnesium nitrate hexahydrate, the specific amount that you put in, or I put in in this case. Now to get the heat of solution for magnesium nitrate hexahydrate, a more general number, we need to take our experimental value, the Q of solution, and divide by the moles of magnesium nitrate that, that we put in. And that will give us um, the heat of solution, the change in enthalpy of solution for magnesium nitrate hexahydrate, a more general and useful number. And again, just to get the moles of magnesium nitrate, just take the grams, the mass, and divide by its molar mass. So again, here are some of my, you know, some numbers. Don't use these, of course, use your own. And don't worry if your, your values look different than mine. This is just some stuff I'm using to illustrate the kind of calculations. So here's our equation. This is my data mass of my water, specific heat, um, the initial and final temperatures, my delta T of the water. Um, this is the calorimeter constant. We just got this from part A, and we're going to use this for um, the rest of the, the calculations mostly. This is my mass of magnesium nitrate hexahydrate, and there's its molar mass. Um, so plugging everything in, Q of solution is mass of the water, specific heat, delta T of the water, calorimeter constant times delta T of the calorimeter, which is the same as the delta T of the water. Um, I, I found with my numbers a Q of solution of positive about 470 joules. So to find my heat of solution, I needed the moles of magnesium nitrate. So there's the, my mass divided by the molar mass of magnesium nitrate hexahydrate. 
I have this many moles, so now when I take my Q of solution divide by that, I get about 2.1 times 10 to the fourth joules per mole, or positive 21 or so kilojoules per mole. Again, use your numbers. Um, don't worry if they're different than mine. Part C, heat of solution of sodium carbonate, exactly the same. Only thing that changes is instead of um, magnesium nitrate hexahydrate, we're dissolving sodium carbonate. So the same basic setup. The only difference here is that we're going to use the moles of sodium carbonate, which we get by taking the mass of sodium carbonate that we weighed out, divided by its molar mass. And again, here's my numbers. <clears throat> again, mine. Use your own. Um, my mass of water was this, specific heat. My final temperature and initial temperature, so my delta T was this, 2.2 um, or so degrees Celsius. Calorimeter constant. Again, we found this um, in part A. Yours is going to be different. That's just what I found with my numbers. There's the mass that I weighed out of sodium carbonate and its molar mass. So plugging these guys into here, Q of solution, negative mass of the water, specific heat, delta T of the water, calorimeter constant, delta T of the calorimeter. Um, I found a heat of solution or reaction, same thing, as negative 510 or so joules. Um, again, to get the heat of solution, I find the moles of sodium carbonate by taking the mass over the molar mass. Take the moles, divide it into the Q of solution, and I got a negative 25 kilojoules per mole or so. Part D, this is where we took the solid magnesium nitrate hexahydrate and solid sodium carbonate and reacted them together in solution. So we weigh it out each, added, you know, put them in the same weigh boat, dumped them in, you know, measured the change in temperature. So this is the reaction. And here, right, um, not only do we have energy either going into or out of the reaction itself, but because one of these reactants will be in excess, you, you, it's pretty much, you know, you're never going to add exactly this, the right number of moles of, that you need of each. So one of these will be in excess, right? One of them will be the limiting reactant. And it's going to be different depending upon, you know, how much of each you added. It doesn't matter. Um, but whatever, whichever reactant is in excess, guys, there's going to be an energy change associated with that, depending upon whether or not it's an exothermic or endothermic heat of solution. But, you know, the, the excess reactant is going to dissolve and it's going to um, either release energy if its heat of solution is exothermic or absorb energy if its heat of solution is endothermic. But we need to take that into account, and that's what this term is here. And then on the other side, we have the water and the calorimeter, um, the thermal energy going into or out of those guys. You know, negative sign because it's off, you know, one's, you know, they're, they're going in opposite directions. If we, you know, just solve this for Q of reaction, which is what we want for this part here, Q of this reaction, by subtracting Q of the solution of the excess reactant, um, we get this right here. And now all we have to do, guys, is plug in for Q of water, Q of calorimeter, and Q of solution of the excess reactant. Q of water again, MS delta T. Q of calorimeter, C calorimeter times delta T of the solution. And Q of the of solution of the excess reactant is going to be the heat of solution for the excess reactant. Again, it could be either one of the two. But we already calculated the heat of solution for both reactants. So whichever one it is, we have that number, this number right here, times the moles of the excess reactant. Now, the moles of the excess reactant will be how much we put in initially minus the amount that reacts, so the amount that's left over. And that's what goes here, guys. So here's our equation that we're going to get some data and plug the numbers in. And then again, these, these are my numbers. This is what it looks like. Um, the mass of magnesium nitrate, mass of sodium carbonate, mass of the water, final temperature, the initial temperature, delta T, down here. Now, okay, this is important right here. Um, so because the energy that's going into the water um, is not, it's not going or coming out of, it's not pure water. It's water with these ions dissolved in it. Right? And so we have to take the specific heat of that solution into account. We, it's really not legitimate to use 4.184 anymore. So what you should use is this number right here. This will be the specific heat capacity of that solution. Um, and where this number came from is I actually used the same calorimeter you guys are using and did, did a few you know, simple experiments and was able to um, come up with this number right here. Uh, I did, you know, did it um, multiple times and it, it was very consistent. And I took the average and this is what I got. 
All right, so now to find our excess reactant and limiting reactant, okay, we're going to take the, the mass of the sodium carbonate divided by its molar mass. Again, this is my number, guys. Make sure you use yours. Um, the mass of the magnesium nitrate, this was mine, divided by its molar mass. And so I got, for my numbers, I got um, this many moles of sodium carbonate, this many moles of magnesium nitrate hexahydrate. Because it's a one-to-one -one mole ratio in this particular reaction, the, the reactant that there are fewer moles of will be the limiting reactant. And, and for my numbers, that was sodium carbonate. It might be the other way around for you guys. Just you got to calculate, right? And so the excess reactant for me was the magnesium nitrate hexahydrate. And that means the moles of my excess reactant, my excess magnesium nitrate hexahydrate, is just how many I started with, the moles I started with right here, minus the moles that are used up. And again, guys, because it's a one-to-one -one mole ratio, I use one mole of magnesium nitrate hexahydrate for every one mole of sodium carbonate that reacts. And so I used up this many moles, the same number of moles of sodium carbonate as I put in there, of magnesium nitrate hexahydrate. And this is my moles of excess um, reactant, which was, the for me, the magnesium nitrate hexahydrate. And then, you know, my data. Um, there's our equation. We now have enough data and information to plug in. Mass of water, mass of the, the, the solution, specific heat of the solution, delta T of the solution, um, calorimic constant, delta T of the solution. Um, and this is the, right here, guys, this is the heat of solution for magnesium nitrate hexahydrate that we found earlier. Again, yours is going to be different. It's from your experiments. And, you know, it might be sodium carbonate for you. You know, it depends on your numbers, right? But for me, because magnesium nitrate hexahydrate was the excess reactant, this is what I found for its heat of solution. And this is how many moles of the magnesium nitrate hexahydrate were in excess for me. Heat of solution times the moles. Plugging these numbers in, I end up with a Q of reaction of positive 250 or so joules. To get my heat of reaction, I just take my Q of reaction. Now we divide by the moles of the limiting reactant, which for me was the sodium carbonate and was this many moles right here. And that gave me a heat of reaction of positive 12.9 or 13 kilojoules per mole. Again, use your numbers, get your results. And finally, the last thing we need to do, guys, is use Hess's law to determine the heat of reaction for our equation of interest, which is the reaction between aqueous magnesium ion, aqueous carbonate ion, to form solid magnesium carbonate. Mm -hmm. And this is what we know. From our experiments, we found the heat of reaction between magnesium nitrate hexahydrate solid, solid sodium carbonate. We found the heat of solution for solid magnesium nitrate hexahydrate and the heat of solution for solid sodium carbonate. Mm -hmm. And these are my numbers. Use yours again, right? So Hess's law, okay, okay, says that we can, if we can manipulate these equations so that they add up to our equation of interest, we can manipulate our, our heat, our delta H's and come up with a heat of reaction. And so the way that we manipulate this is we take the, the reaction between the magnesium nitrate hexahydrate solid, solid sodium carbonate, and again, this is my number that I got, use yours. And it ends up if we reverse the heat of solution for magnesium nitrate hexahydrate, that's what this is here. Remember, we change the sign for the delta H. Also reversing the um, heat of solution equation for sodium carbonate, changing its sign. Um, when we do that, the reason we do that is because now when we add up these equations, everything cancels out but what we want to find. So the, the solid magnesium nitrate hexahydrate cancels because it's on the left here and the right here. Solid sodium carbonate cancels. Nitrate ion cancels. Waters cancel. Sodium ions cancel. And we're left with this. So now, now that we've manipulated these equations so that they add up to our equation of interest, and we've manipulated the, the delta H's appropriately, you just add these guys up, and there's our heat of reaction. Again, using my numbers. Use your own. I got, I got a positive 17 kilojoules per mole. That's all there is to that, guys.